Hi, uh, my name is Kafai Lai. I uh, work in an IBM uh, in cooperation in the Semiconductor Research and Development Center in East Frisco, New York. My work actually covers a broad range of work within lithography, uh, starting from you know uh, processing type of work uh, and also um, scanner optics uh, analysis and characterization. And then I gradually more moved towards the area of computational lithographies. And then, you know, in also in to step into the area of exciting areas of design technology co-optimization. So start to have, you know, small exposure in the design area. And also, you know, so that you know, we can look into some uh, uh, pathfinding for future lithography solutions. Computational lithography basically is to use uh, uh, mathematical algorithms and together with the use of high performance computing platform to look into uh, solving the problem for a full chip design you know, and, and solution to, in order to build masks that we can use for you know, patterning silicon. And sometimes in the early days of setting up a technology node in the definition phase, nothing is really solid, so we, this, that's the time actually the, the computational lithographers we work with the designers and, and together that's exact, there's some sort of this design technology co-optimization uh, is really a uh, hot topic and a focus of, of, many, uh, of, of many engineers so, so that we can really help the designer to see uh, their designer intent on, on, on the real chips. Yeah, director assembly is um, a very, you know, a new kind of like um, a rising stars, and, but it's still a kind of a new technologies. Um, and the interesting part of director cell assembly, it, it, is the res it gives a resolution not from the optics, a lot of the uh, uh, resolving powers of optics, but it, it comes from the, the material itself. Uh, and so you, the material will, will have space uh, separation to give you fine resolution gratings. And we often call this is because this is uh, in traditional lithography, we, we put all the information on the mass and we transfer and project it on the wafer. So we, we call it a top-down approach. But for uh, director's assembly, it's kind of like a hybrid approach. So we, what we print on, on the wafer is some, something we call guiding patterns. So this is a top-down approach. But we're only printing the guiding pattern, not the actual feature itself. The actual features come from the chemical process of the self-assembly process to give you the high resolution feature. Interestingly, there's a lot of paper recently, you know, focusing on director's assembly. And, I, and in this year's uh, conference, I think there will be even more focus in more milestone paper coming out in next year. And then we will have better ideas of whether director's self-assembly will be a, a, a feasible alternative to say, some other technologies. And there are other alternatives to, to DSA, definitely. And people have been, you know, there's a many discussion or a heated discussion on what will be the technology for, for the next generation node. I mean, a lot of time, we go to, say, even move to 10 nanometer node or 14 nanometer or 10 nanometer node. Seem, seems like there's uh, many people uh, are working into this optical uh, multiple patterning technique. Now, multiple patterning techniques is very linear to lithographers. And there's a lot of uh, existing tool, tool, tool set in the fab, and people understand the, 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 how to practice it well. But however, this is the cost issue. You know, building a lot, lot more mass than than before, and so people are looking into alternatives. You know, and, and one big thing is migrating to, you know, uh, ten nanometer or seven nanometer. One, uh, one uh, very attractive option is to use the uh, extreme UV lithography, which is basically a soft X-ray lithography. Uh, and it has a lot of advantage. We've seen um, you know, very promising results. Uh, I think the major issue is right now is the, um, the readiness and when it will be ready for high volume manufacturing uh, because the issue of you know, source power and some of the mass uh, defects uh, mitigation problem. Some other things like uh, you know, uh, Implant lithography, but it's kind of suffered from, uh, you know, some of these, uh, you know, o o o doing overlay is a big issue. Um, I really have to stress that you know a lot of this technology uh, will help to Im improve resolution, but overlay is also a equally important things because uh, it help to build devices. Uh, and so, no matter what technology people will use, you know, they have to 
hand, handle this, uh, tackle this problem of you know, you know, achieving you know, um, you know, very tight overlay budget. We see a lot of challenging in, in still in doing this kind of you know, uh, designing a two-dimensional chips. So there's another interesting um, option that people are looking into is how to do three-dimensional three integration. That means we're stacking these chips together and so that we kind of will relax the, the, the requirement for you know, scaling for two-dimensional chips. And now not only that, uh, uh, for like splitting the, the chips into you know, different layers, but we can also greatly enhance the, the so-called system on a chip concept. Uh, we can put in many, many customized chips like logic chips and memory chips and some of the I.O. chips. They, in each of the chips need to be optimized and customized in their process. So, by, by doing this 3D integration, they allow these, um, the, the chip manufacturers and the process engineer to fully customize their own chips and, and we'll be able to stack it up in a very compact manner. So those are the challenges, and, and, but the challenges is the opportunity for actually to have solved the whole you know, scaling problem, which is you know, uh, it's a very big challenge for us and, you know, and it's very costly. Uh, investment for a lot of uh, you know design company or manufacturing companies. So.